Alright, what's up guys? I'm going to be discussing the R39 CC9 Deepness Clear that just happened a couple of days ago. It's the highest risk that HG has ever given us and will ever give us. On release, a lot of people didn't think it was possible, me included, but Ryan did the impossible. They made it happen. So it took four servers to complete this. CN, JP slash EN, and uh, finally, the TW server. Technically, it's just traditional Chinese speaking server, but Everyone just says TW server for convenience. A lot of people thought that this was sort of private server. It's not. It's just on the TW server, which is a few months uh, behind EN. So at first glance, this squad might look normal, but uh, there's a few weird stuff. First of all, there's no Phantom, which they usually use in R38 together with Kafka to deal with the Reapers. But they don't have that here. Instead, They've opted to bring Spalter, which is a very very bad pick. Usually, she's considered to be not very good for this CC, and even in my own specialist run, uh, she was just used to kill peons. Very very bad pick. Ezero Kafka is just to save DP, since they're only using her for her sleep and not her damage. We have Gladia on S2, which is a very strange choice. She was already used in R38, but that was on S3, which can perform um, a certain bug with shifters that S2 can't. We also have Cardigan who's a 3-star, uh, but that's a very very important reason why she's used. Same with Nian, but I'll get into that later. The other stuff is pretty standard for R38. So to open, it's pretty standard. It's just double flag bearer plus backpipe. According to someone that did uh, R39 attempts too, the order that they did this was a bit different. Usually it's double flag bearer then backpipe, but they chose to do uh, Psylocke to backpipe to Elysium instead. So if you guys have seen any R38 clears, you'll know how uh, Weedy deals with these eggs. There's a weird quirk with how the game works. When these guys explode, when they take enough damage, they lose all velocity. So they stop moving right there. And uh, that's used with very, very specific Weedy timings and damage and shit to make them go to right at the edge. At R3, these guys have very, very huge range to where if you place, let's say, Surtur here, she would still get hit by this guy's uh, explosion. So yeah, you need to shift them to the very very edge of the tile to be safe. Now a little bit of a quirk with Weedy. Her cannon and herself actually have different targeting. She will target the closest to blue box, while cannon targets what's closest to it. So right here, they're gonna abuse that. Uh, cannon is targeting this guy that's getting shifted towards the left. So as you can see, the cannon is targeting this guy, so it's gonna push both of these eggs, while Weedy herself is targeting this guy, so it's only going to hit this egg. Okay, so right here, you can see one of them uh, is activating their skill, and they stop right at the edge, while the other one just got normally shifted to this part. But with that, they are out of range of certain now, and you can clap them. It's standard R38 stuff, um, but yeah, cool shit. Surtur plus Salak just barely has enough damage with Weedy's skills. But of course, one of them only got hit by uh, the cannon shot instead of getting hit by both. So one of them is going to be left with a bit of HP. Another interesting quirk of this run, they are using Weedy's cannon to clap these peons up here. Usually what um, people do for R38 is they use Weedy to either clap this guy or she's already retreated at this point. So to finish off this guy, Blemishine, eggs don't explode when they're under sleep. So yeah, Blemishine is pretty much the only op that can uh, safely clap them. Clapping these guys with Weedy, and they're setting up a bunch of stuff here. Nian is going to be to tank the first stock, and Gladia, uh, it's going to be for the final setup actually. So these four eggs go through this tile before they go into the blue box, but if you use Gladia, or well, any puller, you can actually shift it, the bottom right egg, to where it would get blocked on this tile too. So you can put a defender here, and then another operator here. That's all she needs to do. Cool stuff. Let me finish off the egg. And now, bullshit RNG. This run technically should have no RNG, but there's actually a few sources of RNG. So this is one of them. Kafka has two options when she finishes her skill. She either gets revealed, before she does the damage, or she does the damage and then gets reviewed. So right here, they can't afford to let this Reaper wake up, so she needs to review herself while doing the damage. And this guy right here could have also done another thing here. 
when an enemy has two different things that they can do at one point, and you place an operator within their range, they'll randomly pick one of them. So this guy could have done his range attack instead of the skill. So Nian having her shield can live through the explosion, uh, and with skill up, she basically doesn't take any damage at all. I'm not sure who else can do this, but that's the reason why Nian's being used anyways, which you'll see later. But I believe she should be one of the few options that can do this. Skill activation, Kafka to activate everyone, and since this guy's invisible, you need Kafka to uh, let Blemmy block. So they're stalling to make the Reapers die, obviously. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, they didn't bring Phantom, which means that they had to find some other solution for Reapers. Which, this is one of the parts of it. They push the eggs too, which is very important for this upcoming part right here. There's so something important here. Uh, Weedy just barely survives in order to take, well, not even take one hit, to, to let this guy do his, uh, start his animation uh, and stall that way. So that's going to be very important later. For now, Saria's uh, ready for the final burst. And the positioning of everything is really interesting. Usually, what people do is they have both Saria and Sota out of range of the first dogs and just clap the first dogs when they're not attacking them. But right here, uh, both of them are very much in strange positions. Sota especially can be clapped by first dogs if they just walk over here. But yeah, they set up the Gladia, cool stuff, and stall this guy for just that little bit longer. Spotter's down, awesome. Now here, they need to uh, roll the skill RNG again. Well, not skill RNG, the boss skill RNG. Good stuff. And this is why Spotter's necessary to just tank this. Uh, dude. Now this part right here, this is in my opinion, the most cracked part of the run. So usually, when you're syncing up enemies, what you do is you place an operator within range of both of them. That way, uh, they'll, they'll both start their attacks at the exact same time. But right here, these two are separated. Uh, this first guy starts attacking first. But somehow, despite that, they manage to time this guy to walk for just exactly as much as the other guy's attack interval is. And it's not like there's a little bit of difference or anything. This is literally frame perfect. So that BD um, retreat earlier, the Kafka timings, Blammy timings, all those, those were done just perfectly so that this would happen. And the fact that they actually managed to make it frame perfect is absolutely wild to me. But yeah, it's going to be important later on for now. Cool range bait. You don't need to block if you are just a range bait. And uh, if you guys can see here, there's two of the range uh, guys on Claudia right now, and there's the third one coming. So, uh, if you guys had noticed earlier, Saria's range actually doesn't hit this tile, uh, which means the first stocks are gonna have to be within Claudia's tile. And this is one of the solutions to that. The first stock is just straight up gonna walk into Claudia's tile while she's blocking the other two stuff. So the early activation to just clear those guys. And this arc timing right here is very, very precise. They barely have enough time. This has to hit right as their invincibility ends. Backpack is also needed here to push the top guy down since uh, it's not in Saria's range yet. And also, Gladia can't take two hits, otherwise she dies. And also, they need to sync up both of the first stocks uh, melee animation. So yeah, three purposes for that right here. As you can see, uh, right here, she's going to hit both of these guys. Even though their blue ring is still active, it's uh, their invincibility has run out. And I think this part is probably what uh, everyone was most confused about if you're not uh, experienced in the game. This right here is attack cancelling. Gladia has just enough full force to shift these guys by 0 0.03 tiles, which usually absolutely does not matter, but uh, it's enough to shift them, to, for them to enter the unbalanced state where their attacks will get cancelled, where they can't do anything. And just nice with Psylark, uh, Psylark debuff on the first stops and Psylark buff on Gladia herself, you have just enough ASPD to cancel these guys. It's actually two frames off from perfect, but you don't really need perfection when uh, 
the skill only lasts for 20 seconds. So that's how they are stalling for the burst. Unfortunately, even that isn't enough. Since these guys have a 20 second uh, skill cooldown, they would actually have used that skill right after this melee attack. So instead of letting that happen, they are forcing them to switch to range attacks, which adds like maybe one second to their total timer before uh, their skill activates, since they have to finish the, the animation. And that is just barely enough to kill this guy. Insane. Good shit. So now, setting up for the eggs, dropping everyone. So right here, uh, Elysium Deploy is at 0 TP. Um, so that's the reason why they had to pick Cardigan. Cardigan is the cheapest defender that can do the, that can do her role properly. As for what that means, I will explain in a bit, but basically, they either had to pick her or some other 3 star defenders or Narcon. And that's the reason why that they couldn't pick the other, uh, defenders compared to her. Because they don't have Phantom, they have to deal with the Reapers like that to block them and just stall them alongside the eggs. That's why this pool was necessary. Uh, well, I mean, it's necessary in general, but they uh, added some use to it instead of just blocking the egg by having her block both the egg and the Reapers. On the bottom right, it's just uh, one final spotter to kill this final dude, and after that, it's just bomb defusal. So as I mentioned earlier, sleep makes it so that the explosions can't proc. So yeah, Blemmy is going to be the one killing all of the eggs. Right here, right here, Sarah has to damage this guy just the perfect amount to set up for something. So they're stalling both of these guys, uh, separating these three. And now, you're gonna see something slightly correct. A lot of math was needed. For this moment to happen right here. That one Surtur attack to make this guy prop, and then swapping to Gladia. That extends how long Gladia can block this guy for. So yeah, they're gonna continue with their bomb defusal, clap all of these guys. So if you guys can see right here, um, Gladia's sanity is at half right now, uh, which means that the egg exploded. She can take one egg explosion. It's just self heal to heal up anyway, so yeah. Basically, she can survive uh, egg explosions twice. Up here, same thing. Uh, the reason why Cardigan and Nian were so necessary, and the reason why Cardigan isn't picked over Nor, is because uh, Nian plus Cardigan are the cheapest options that can survive the egg proc and also heal themselves. Nian doesn't worry about the explosion since, well, she has shields, but Cardigan barely has enough HP after Nian to live the egg proc, and uh, because of that, she can solve her way longer. But the top side is still not looking good right now, so uh, that's why they're switching Saria to be down here and uh, switching to Blemmy to deal with the top. Lots of stall, lots of switching, cool stuff. Right here, they're just resetting the egg's position since it moves a little bit every time they switch blockers. So yeah, this is just out of precaution. Cool stuff. 0 0.03 tiles, awesome. I, I don't even know whether it mattered <laughs> since they fucked up the Nian deploy twice. But uh I would assume that they did that throughout the run, they just didn't show it. We got our boy up charging Blemmy. Very strange sight to see, but uh it's necessary to activate her skill on the Reaper. This guy honestly isn't really a threat with all the setup they can do at this point. So yeah. Uh Sleep, Saria, Kafka, Weedy, everything. And yeah, it's dead. So this part here is also out of precaution. I'm pretty sure that it wasn't actually within Nian's style, which would have been the reason why that they pull, but uh, better safe than sorry. So it's uh, to set up for the kill that they are about to do, right here. If the Reapers were in BD's range, obviously they will activate, so they need to make sure that that's, that doesn't happen, of course. This setup is very weird, and it's the final setup of the run. Final three enemies. After you deal with these, Reapers, this guy can just be stalled indefinitely. They actually fucked up this uh, run. They, they fucked up how they dealt with these guys. This dude right here, these two dudes right here, were actually supposed to fly all the way to this part, with uh, Gladia simply just using the S2 to alter their, um, their trajectory. But they used Gladia late, so instead 
this happen. But it's fine. They have Weedy. They have a lot of bodies. Uh, it's a lot of damage being done already. So yeah, they still managed to live. I assume you guys already watched the clear, so I won't go into this. It's just body throwing uh, until they win. Smart body throwing, I should say. Now, that's actually something that I don't know whether it's, it's a happy accident because they failed this or not. Uh, but if you guys saw earlier, when they were on Blemmy, their sh um, versions are not the same. This guy got placed to the very bottom, but this guy's on the right. And because of that, at least I think it's because of that, uh, they could do this. They could block on both tiles, on both of these tiles, instead of having to block on just this lane. If they block on this tile right here, uh, Weedy will have been hit already. It's even though they, they managed to get a kill, it's still extremely tight. Uh, you could see their DP was at 12 by the end, so they couldn't fuck up any retreats, and at this point they are so out of bodies other than Elysium. So yeah, good as clear. With that, the clear's pretty much done. With the final Abyssal Hunter duo, uh, good shit. They clear it. I'll take 9. Awesome. Yeah, this clear's fucking insane. Basically, the comments here are just talking about um the different timings that they had to do. I can't read Chinese too, so uh, I'm just using Google Translate, but from what it seems, they are talking about, they're discussing the um different details of strat, just like I'm doing right now. Uh, and they are going into the timing specifically, like the frames and all that stuff, um, when they are using Kafka to align the first talks. There's also a comment from the guy that played, who discussed how uh, they actually got a solution early on. They were struggling without pause deploy, all that stuff, but managed to do it in the end. So yeah, you guys should check out the original video and uh, check out the comments, I guess. It's pretty interesting stuff. I'm not going to go into it right now. It's uh, a lot to get into, and I don't think my Google Translate is going to help you guys better understand this anyways. So this actually isn't the only R39. This morning, R39 was also cleared by Team Shadow Guts with a squad that's pretty similar to the other R38s. So honestly, the solution definitely isn't going to be as crazy as this, but uh, it's probably going to be uh, still interesting to watch. Considering this fucking shit, what the hell is this? Why is background on S1? Why is she at S or 7? I don't know whether I'll be re-uploading this. If you guys want me to re-upload it, please tell me in the comments. Uh, I kind of feel bad for re-uploading, but uh, I'll at least link the, the clear um, in community posts. That's pretty much the end of the video. I just wanted to explain this clear since it's absolutely cracked and it uses so many different tiny details, so many uh, different aspects of AK's bugginess and mechanics just to make this work. Probably the most cracked run in the entire game's history. And I don't think it'll ever be beaten, personally. It's, it's definitely up there as one of my favorites now. It's not my favorite, but I love Ryan. I got like, Cool shit. Anyways, yeah, bye.